How's it going everyone? This is my hello and welcome back to Chrono Trigger. In the last video, we brought Chrono back to life because what we did was the Chrono the Chrono Trigger took us back to the moment when Lavos was about to obliterate Chrono. But we then replaced Chrono when time was frozen. We replaced Chrono with the Chrono clone. So what Lavos ended up disintegrating was actually the doll, not Chrono himself. So that is how we got Chrono back. Now I decided to do something interesting here. I brought Robo here because he has Heal Beam. And now Luca has access to Mega Bomb. So I had more powerful techs. Also, Magus had or Yanis had a stronger tech too, so we were able to defeat Specchio easily this time. One magic tap and five full ethers. That felt good. Now as you notice, the Chrono Trigger theme song was actually still playing during the Specchio fight, which I thought, thought was an interesting detail considering how, well, usually you'd think the usual ba -ba 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 song would play, but no. We, instead we got the Chrono Trigger theme because that was what I was playing before. Now excuse me while I go rearrange my party. Okay, I have Chrono in, in my party again, and I gave him the Aeon Helm and Aeon Suit, since, well, he was missing out on that. Now as it turns out, Chrono still hasn't learned his final tech yet, which I am a little disappointed by considering how in my last playthrough of the game, I actually got Chrono to learn his final tech, so that means I'm pretty behind. Also, I'm trying to raise his magic stat considering that it's, well, pretty low. Let's continue raising it. How is your magic stat now? Now it's comparable to Robo's. So you can talk to each and every single one of these characters to talk about their side quests, because those side quests that Gaspar talked about is related to each and, is related to each and every single one of these characters. One of the side quests Gaspar talked about will deal with Marl and her father. I want Luca. Now this is Luca being interested in science. So this is an interesting thing. We have here a cave that we can take a look at in one of the side quests. Yay, thanks Robo. The origin of machines. Yeah. Everyone has a birthplace, Robo. Oh, is that by any chance the factory where you were made? So let's take it. Let's talk with Frog and Giannis since they may have something interesting to say about their respective side quests. <laughs> nice. Uh, that was actually a good piece of dialogue, Frog. So the night spirit which wanders. Yeah, you know who it could be referring to. So these are going to be locations that. Are that are going to be relevant to the side quests. Hey, man, Yannis, what's up? Uh, nice to see you're joining us too, Yannis. Oh yeah, Ozzy. So he has a castle that we can break into. That's pretty similar to Magus's castle or Yannis's castle. Okay, and last but very least, there's Isla. Why do I say that? So... Isla has a potentially interesting... Well, item here. So... She's talking about something very interesting from the past. Now, what is this very interesting thing from the past that we're talking about here? Well, let's check it out by going back to the prehistoric times. Let's begin by starting with the very beginning, shall we? Now, here's the thing. Did Gaspar talk about anything concerning the prehistoric times? As it turns out, no, he didn't. Uh, well, first of all, we can try visiting these ruins again. They were still ruined from that war from before, but there's a new here for some reason. How's it going? Um, what? No, I don't want to do that. No, no, no. No, I don't want to be a Rono. 
A Rono? Don't you have something for us, though? Thank you. A Silver Rock? So, here's the thing. We have some rocks. And... They invoke triple text. Now... Some characters can only use triple text with a stone. Here's the thing. If you want to use a triple tech without using an, an accessory, Chrono has to be already involved. For there to be a triple tech where Chrono is not involved, you need a stone. So this will allow Isla, Robo, and Frog to do a triple tech. And this black rock allows Yanis, Marl, and Luca to do a triple tech. And that's significant because Yanis does not learn dual techs with anyone. He is independent. He doesn't believe in teamwork. So that's the only that's one of the few chances you can get when it comes to cooperation. Now as it turns out, you can get a new piece of armor here. If you have ten of everything, you can get what is called a ruby armor, I think. So let's see how many of each we have. Oh we need more horns and such. I wonder. I might go check out that area to get more stuff. To see if I can get more horns, so excuse me. Okay, I have enough horns to get a ruby thing from the trading hut. So we get a ruby armor. Now we can get more, but that requires getting more items. So what is this ruby armor, you may ask? Well, it cuts fire by 80%. So that is damn significant, if I can say that. So, when it comes to story developments and side quests in the prehistoric era, that's it. That's all there is to Isla and the prehistoric era. Pretty boring, right? Yeah, this time period sucks. And I mean it, this is quite possibly the least interesting time period. And as much as I like fighting with Isla, she is the least interesting character when it comes to story and character. I don't know, she seems kind of one-dimensional. I mean, there is going to be some depth to her character, but even then it's not enough depth to compensate for her lack of depth overall. So, as much as I love using Isla in combat, because she's amazing in combat, her character's pretty under underdeveloped because, well, what else can you do with a prehistoric woman, right? Now, oh, um, actually I don't want to, do I want to be here? Actually I do. Hold on a sec, let me, let me prepare first. Okay, so I'm giving Yanis a wall ring and a ru ruby vest. R r r r. I'm giving Chrono the ruby armor that we just got, and Luca has a Taban suit. So, what we have up ahead is something that's kind of infamous in Chrono Trigger. You thought the Death Peak area was bad enough? Well, we have this fancy ass place, the Sun Palace, which looks a lot like the Ocean Palace. I mean, this seems like something that came out, came out of the Kingdom of Zeal. Then again, people of the Kingdom of Zeal have talked about this sun-like object before. What the heck are you? Hi, oh, hi. So this is Son of Sun, and this is not a fun boss battle whatsoever. You cannot, the only way to do damage, uh, I was in the middle of monologuing here, excuse me. The only way to do damage is by hitting one of these, oh I got it right, you have to hit one fire, and if you hit the correct fire, then the boss itself will receive damage. So once you find the correct fire to attack, then you should go at it. So that seems simple. God. So when it comes to strength or anything like that, that doesn't really matter. Since all that matter since you're attacking fire, and the amount of damage the boss actually gets is predetermined and is the same amount of damage okay now they're changing everything up so now we have to hope that we can find the correct 
flame to attack. Otherwise, we won't be happy. Let's see here. Nope. So that's what happens. So as you can see, now we know what which flame not to attack. Nope, we missed again. Great job, doofus. <laughs> doofus. Don't tell me it's the same one that was last time. It can't be, right? So as you can see, the concept of this- Oh, good, we found the correct flame. So as you can see, the concept of this boss battle is actually pretty dumb. It's unique, but the execution is dumb. Nobody likes this boss battle. Nobody does. So, when it comes to side quests, I'm all like, you know what, let's get the most annoying one out of the way. Oh, nice, we got the correct flame. Sweet. So, you may, you can see that this isn't the most exciting boss battle there is. And as unfortunate as it sounds. Sorry guys, this game isn't perfect in every single boss battle. Why am I apologizing on Squaresoft's behalf? Squaresoft is weird, you know that? Speaking of Squaresoft, I suppose I should address this now, but oh god, Chrono. So how about that news two weeks ago, where we found out that Cloud is going to be in Super Smash Bros. Like, what the hell? That was like a Game Facts fantasy for like middle schoolers, and now that's reality. Also, Every single character is now in Smash Brothers. Oh cool, we beat Son of Sun. Good. Good, we got rid of the son of a gun. And we're never gonna see this boss ever again. Ever. And it's not gonna be annoying if it does appear again. In some incarnation. Get out of here. So this is the ancient sun stone that the people of the Kingdom of Zeal have talked about. And it's the same stone that Gaspard mentioned. But it doesn't have any energy inside of it. So we need to recharge it with sunlight, but it takes a lot of time. I mean, it's not even the sunstone anymore, it's the moonstone. So we need to put it in a place with sunlight, and we need to put it there for a very long amount of time. Well, as much as I was bashing the prehistoric era, we do need to go back there. Because that is the answer. We need to go to the very extreme when it comes to time. The extreme past. Because if the sunstone is given sunlight from that period on, then maybe it'll have enough energy to be powerful again. Now we actually visited the area that's relevant to us by accident when we were first flying on pterodactyls. This was an island that I sort of visited before. This is the sun keep. Now what is so special about the sun keep here? Take a look at this. It's never dark in here. So we'll leave the moonstone here because it'll receive sunlight forever. So hopefully it'll continue being well energized as time goes on. So for now I'm going to put the side quest, the sunstone side quest on pause because I want to say that the sunstone side quest may or may not involve other basically i think it would be more convenient if i take care of it later it's also not pressing for us to take care of the sunstone side quest right away by the way if you're curious is the sunstone here since it must have had all of the 65 million 2300 years you have sun right wait a minute what Okay, so something must have happened to it in the past for the sunstone to not be here. That's annoying. Okay, but... Well, first of all, let me change my team, I mean party up a little bit. So now that we're in the future, I prefer not to... Well, I kind of want to go in reverse chronological order, but at the same time, I don't know what I'm talking about. But the future has only one other thing for us to care about before we can ignore it and consider other time periods. Because as we all know, there is no other reason for us to fight in this time period. 
because our actions have to be in the past because this time period it's already desolate even though people are trying to survive in fact i'm kind of curious i want to check out a dome that we have visited sorry it's just my imagination but while we fly back to the factory let us just listen to this song here this song is called the wings of time and well you do know that i love this game's soundtrack a lot and i talk about yasunori mitsuda the composer a lot but this song is nice i like it it's the wings of time you know what it sounds like? It's one of those, you know those daytime sitcoms that used to be on TV in the 80s or 90s? I suppose it's more relevant for Americans, but... It sounds like the theme song for one of the 90s sitcoms that would play during the daytime when most people were at school. I don't know, it's, it sounds jazzy and I like it. So we are at the Geno Dome. Now, this side quest is going to be concerned with Robo. So sorry, Frog. Why is it concerned with Robo? Because this will be concerned with the origins of robots or machinery. Besides, we cannot get in without Robo's expertise here, right? Thank you, Robo. <laughs> okay, I already have my party here, so let's do it. Um, Robo? Okay, so Robo has to be at the front of your party throughout this dungeon. So for this side quest, Robo is the leader. Chrono, you can take it back to the back seat. So who is this speaking here? Prometheus? What? Wait a minute. So you're telling me that... So I said that Robo is not your real name and your real name was R6XY. Are you telling me that R6XY is also an alias and your real name is Prometheus? That sounds creepy. Get away from us. Oh, and now we're trapped here, aren't we? Crap. Well, we're doing this. Let's go into the Geno Dome. So this actually... You know what? Let's go. Let's have fun. So what we have is a gauntlet of enemies. Now... You notice that I actually took the gold stud off of Chrono, I mean off of Giannis, because well, it does belong to Chrono as much as it pains me considering how, well the thing is, Magus does use magic better, I mean Giannis does, Giannis does use Xyadja, what was I even saying? I mean, you can argue that Giannis has much better magic, so he's more deserving of the gold stud, but maybe it's just my prejudice here, considering how I just really like Chrono using his text because, you know, we've traveled together with Chrono for a while. I mean, this is the crazy thing. Chrono, this is something I've established before, but Chrono doesn't need to be in a party anymore. He doesn't need to be important anymore. Finally, you've learned Luminaire. Okay. Well, Chrono's gonna be important once again because he's learned his final tech, Luminaire. It's going to be so awesome. And it's why I've been focusing on increasing Chrono's magic stat. Look at that. Look at that. That is Chrono's final and ultimate tech. That is badass. He just creates explosions. Explosions, I say. Explosions that will destroy everything. Only for the price of how many MP? Well, it'd be much more if it weren't for the gold stud. So... If you still prefer to use Chrono, then your endgame strategies involving Chrono will more or less be Luminaire, 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 Luminaire for only 5 MP, Luminaire. I'm just mad with power. I have so much power. Power! Power! Ultimate power! Speaking of which, man, Star Wars is coming out in like a month or so. That's crazy. Any of you guys watching it right away as soon as it gets released? I might not. 
Oh, now we have an actual Giannis, you okay there? <laughs> so now it's time for us to have a little bit of fun with this dungeon. Chrono, thanks for participating, but it's now time for these three stooges to do their thing. So you can go right, but I actually want to do something else before. So I want to go left. Um, there's quite a lot of things to address here, like enemies. 300 years ago, the lava's disaster greatly changed the planet. At this rate, humans will die out from pure despair. Who is this talking to us here? I have no idea. So uh, I decided... So... What was that there? So I decided to do something with Chrono. Um, since he's already learned all of his text, I decided that it's going to make much more sense for Giannis to hold... Well... The gold stud. What's with you? Okay, so we need a way to get past you. Okay. That's one problem we need to think about. Oh, there's a treasure here. Oh, hi, enemies. There we get- Oh, what? So as you can see, we're gonna get some interesting combinations of characters. The thing is, I do want to focus on having... Giannis... Well... Learn his text. So, we're not gonna learn some interesting triple text or... Weird ass... Dual text. Oh, lasers? Well, this is interesting. Um, oh, aren't they going to gang up on us? Oh, they are. They're going to gang up on us. Um, so I brought Island to the party since, well, why not? She could learn some text as well. Destroy everything. Yeah. That should destroy everything in one shot anyway. We've seen those lasers in front of the Black Omen. Nice, you've learned another tech. So, you did notice that Yana's learned a tech before. So, if you want to access this door, we can actually do something here. We can conduct electricity. So, if we conduct electricity, we can actually... What? Okay, I don't remember anything about this place all of a sudden. Okay. This is turning out great, isn't it? Well, let's see what else we can do around But I thought you... I thought you were supposed to... Oh! Okay. I'm dumb. I don't know, like... When it comes to doing RPG Let's Plays, I think one thing I didn't like about my Final Fantasy IX Let's Play was that it was too calculated. Too reliant on... well knowledge of prior you no know, you know it, it was too dependent on knowledge of knowing strategies and knowing puzzles so that was one thing i wasn't pleased about with my final fantasy 9 let's play so i wanted to add some more spontaneity um to this let's play but i seem to have forgotten everything you know what, let's deal with this some other time. I'm... So, as you can see, I've done my research. What's this computer here? Well, I suppose we can read something about the Geno Dome. Oh. Well, I suppose we should have done this first, huh? Oh, this is what we have, what I've demonstrated before. Um, conveyor belt. Oh, interesting. So we want to explore that conveyor belt to our right at some point. The robot guarding the figurine will block anyone that tries to pass, but if you place two guards in front of each other, they will short circuit. Oh, and that's how we can get past that robot that was guarding that one doll. So we need to... Oh, there's a robot in the room upstairs. So we can fetch a robot to deal with that one other robot. And what's with that doll here? Okay then. So that is all the information we need in order to, well, tackle the Genodome, which we shall continue to do so in the next video. We will delve further into the Genodome, figure out who is talking to Robo, and maybe find some things about his past, along with the origins of machines. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.